Yeah, let's move that. Bring this a little bit forward. And I'm just checking the skull shape right now. That looks like it's not the right shape right here. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. So it's the outside. Uh, and this should be brought in some and that's pretty good I think except for right there and this diamond for the last time and there we got a pretty decent dinosaur shape already. This lower jaw right here could be... There's some detail I need to put in for the skull. There's uh... If you look in the muscle reference image you can see there is this kind of shelf of bone right here that this muscle attaches to which the model doesn't have yet. So I'm just gonna quick put it in. And smooth it out. And it looks like my skull needs a little bit more right there. Now I'm just going to quick look from a front view. Right here is where the eye is sitting. I'm going to just. I'm going to mask by holding down control. Masking basically says that if you are modeling it's not going to model right where you masked it like that don't do what I just did right there that was just showing but I just put that mask there just to see if I, the eyes can see forward since this is a predator so it needs forward vision and right here you can see the skull is a little too wide so I'm just gonna grab there with the move brush bring it in some and I think this is a little bit too thick too. I'm basically just drawing off my past experience of modeling di meat eating dinosaurs. I have never actually modeled a Ceratosaurus before, but I, they all follow the same general body plan. I'm gonna smooth this area out a little bit. Okay, and that looks good. And then finally, there are these muscles right here. So this area right here right now, what you'll see in a lot of people's dinosaur arts, they'll often actually show these hollows, which really does not make much sense. For, because there's muscle and fat and all that. So I, there's gonna be a muscle right here that's gonna obscure the bottom of that. hollow and I'm going to smooth this out a little bit too just to get rid of that and the bottom of that as well because there's going to be all the skin sagging down and then obscuring those openings in the skull so right there we got a pretty good starting point for the next portion of the modeling which is wrinkles and stuff. I'm going to quick put in one of the main wrinkles right now just to make the next step easier right there around the mouth just to make, so there's less of a divide between the top of the back of the skull and the jawbone so this jaw muscle is looking a little too thin for me That looks pretty good. So we're gonna quit using Dynamesh now. Dynamesh is, like I said, just used for earlier portions of modeling. It's not used for the layer ones. It's just for getting the general shape of your model. And I'm just gonna quick double check before I finish. Again, my muscle's not looking nice to me. 
so and then that needs to be brought down some just matching up to the picture Okay, that looks pretty decent to me. Except for that little bit right there, which I just fixed. So we're going to retopologize this bottle, which basically is saying redoing the polygons on the model while keeping the same shape. So for this, I'm going to use Z Remesher because it's just a really quick way of doing it. So it's right found right underneath Diamesh in the geometry menu. Just click Z Remesher. The default saying should be good for this project. And there we got it remeshed. So the polygons are following along with the shape of the model. We're gonna turn off Dynamesh. And now we're going to make it more detailed. So this is going to be the lowest polygon level, which in ZBrush is called subdivision levels. To make a new one, just press divide. And as you can see, it divided all the polygons into four polygons. So this is four times the polygons, roughly. There might be a little few areas where it's not doing that exactly. And I think we need to Divide it one more time, and possibly one more time, and we got a pretty nice point for our next steps. Basically, when you're using subdivision layers, you want when you're moving large areas of the model around. Like for example, I want to, I can see right here this jaw needs to be brought in a little bit more. You do not want to be doing it on a high subdivision. You want to be doing it on a low subdivision, just because it's all easier to move around just a few polygons, and then that will be projected all the way back up to the higher subdivision level. If I go back up, you'll see it did it there as well. But if I had done it there, you'd see it's a lot harder to move big areas. So I'm going to first, before we do the wrinkles, I'm going to get some of the those areas we defined before, just a little bit more well defined. For example, there's this kind of, I want to go down to probably to three for this, and you can see there's this kind of ridge right here. I'm going to put that in, smooth out that side. And I'm going to go up a subdivision level, just so I don't smooth this out too much. And I'm going to go back down to about two. Let's get this out again. Because this is going to be an area you are probably going to see in a living creature. And there should be kind of a ridge right here. So I'm just smoothing out that stuff I put in. I'm going down again. And just get the back of the skull a little better. And right here, around the orbit. Just getting the shape a little better defined. about the only place you're going to see if you would at all for this hole and I'm going to get the nostril in now it's not going to fill out this whole cavity like you'll see in a lot of art it's going to probably just fill out the front and you're going to have a bulge around the outside like that this one I probably should go higher. A 
about like that. And finally I'm going to get an eye socket in there so I can put an eye in there. And this should come out a little bit more than that. Like so. And it looks like I need to move this in again so I'm going to uh, low subdivision. Bring that in so the eye socket is largely visible. And this horn's looking a little thick to me, so I'm gonna bring that inward as well. So we got that in place, and that's looking pretty decent to me. I guess move that out a little bit in yeah, some of the other areas. This right here isn't looking good to me. I'm going to dig that out a little bit at a lower subdivision level. And that right there. I'm going to add a kind of curve, a wrinkle around the mouth right there. And we got. Check one last time. This is probably going to droop a little bit, so I don't want it to follow the skull exactly. Actually, it wasn't following the skull, so... And there we got a nice... head shape. Now, we're going to go into the sub-tool menu. These are the separate models that make up your entire model. And we're going to add some eyes. So we're going to insert a new sub-tool, in this case we want to use Sphere 3D since we're adding an eye, and you'll get this really big sphere. And we're going to use the transpose tools just like we did before. Scale it way down so it's about the size of an eye, it really helps if you had the skeleton open because you'll see it's about that size. My eye socket is actually kind of too big. But that's okay since we can just add in eyelids. So about that size. And I'm just using the move transpose tool to bring it into his eye socket. And now you'll notice there's only one eye. So to fix that, go to Z plugin. I would suggest anchoring this over here. You can minimize the draw if you want to see your subtool menu right here. And go to Subtool Master and click Mirror. And by default it should have what we want, which is merge into one subtool and X axis. Click OK and you've got two eyes. Now this thing isn't set up to be, the subtool is not set up symmetrical yet like the head is. Just press X and then you should be able to adjust both eyes at once. But they look pretty good where they are right now to me. So go back down to here. I'm gonna rename these eyes. And I'm gonna go here, rename this head. And so we know which one is which. And with the head selected, I'm going to go back to clay build up. And I'm going to just get some eyelids around there. I'm going back to geometry to bring the subdivision level back up. So I got some more polygons to work with. that out 